today, a powerful weather system rips through the central Rockies. California endures one of the first big rounds of Santa Ana winds this fall. And if that's not enough, an unseasonably strong Category 3 hurricane rolling northwest across Cuba. Now you tell me, friends, which of these stories captures your interest? Well, today we're going to go through each of those one by one. Hurricane Raphael, late this afternoon, seen on the infrared satellite imagery, sustained winds 115 miles an hour. Central pressure 956 millibars. That is down 38 millibars in 24 hours. NHC has significantly upgraded that storm up to Category 3, but the good news is that it will not get much stronger. It will remain a Category 3 hurricane as it crosses Cuba today, then slowly weaken as we go into this evening. Let us take a look at that GFS forecast. This is where we're at right now, the hurricane exiting Cuba and moving into the Gulf. Now, this represents a significant departure from the previous GFS cycles. They were bringing the hurricane northward, of course, weakening into a probably tropical depression by the time it comes on shore, but the European model has been trying to bring that west. The GFS finally falling in line, and by Friday, there it is, Raphael heading into the western gulf and starting to weaken very quickly as we go into Monday. This is what the ensemble members were showing yesterday, definitely bringing it north, but a few filaments going out west. The European model all in for a westerly motion. And what a difference a day makes. GFS falling in line with that European model. Still some possibility of northward drift of the remnants across Louisiana and Pensacola. It could also very well go south. And this is why it is not a good idea to try to pick through all of these spaghetti plots five days in advance because... There's always surprises later down the road. Here is the surface map for just 45 minutes ago showing that developing winter storm. And you can kind of see that that is positioned pretty far north of the surface frontal wave. Part of that is because this is powered by a very strong upper level system. We'll take a look at that shortly, but there is the Bear Clinic Low. Around Deming and Las Cruces, New Mexico, cold front extending westward. Strong gusty winds through the lower Colorado River region. Temperature 60 degrees at Las Vegas with a northeast wind. Those are gusting to 22 knots at the sour. But if we go down into the Los Angeles area, Santa Ana winds. Although it looks like the winds have died down a little bit. Earlier this morning, they were up to 60 miles an hour in parts of the San Fernando Valley. We're only seeing about 15 knots there at the current time. The strongest winds right now are around Riverside and Ontario, looking at about 27 to 31 knots at this moment. At this time, there is extreme fire danger all through Southern California. They are under a PDS, particularly dangerous situation, red flag warning. Late this morning, we did see a fire break out right there between Santa Paula and Moore Park on Bradley Road. I don't know what the current situation is right now, but it looks like it is out of control. Big plume going out into the Channel Islands. And earlier this morning, let me see if I can pull this up, there was a pretty impressive mountain wave plume coming off of the Sierras. Yeah, there's one look at it right there. You can see that it is a standing wave. The flow is moving across the mountains this way. And as it saturates, it produces this cloud material. Let me see if I can get a better shot of that there. Well, this is probably about as good as I can do. But yeah, right there during the early morning hours, some impressive banding through that cloud structure. This is a rather rare phenomenon for the Sierras with flow coming that way. And that's where we typically see the development of mono winds in the Sierras. And really to get that going, we need a very cold air mass across Nevada. The one we have right now is not really all that cold. 
So we're not seeing the strong winds, although they are gusting up to about 20 to 30 miles an hour near Interstate 80 and up north towards Lassen Peak. And then, of course, we've got the main winter weather system in New Mexico, Colorado, and the Four Corners area. So how do we break this down on satellite? Well, first of all, we have to keep in mind that this is visible imagery. Although with the sun going down, this animation will switch over to infrared. It's coming in there at the top right, but not quite there yet. So we break this down into the constituent parts. We've got the Bear Clinic Cloud Shield running about like that. That's the so-called Bear Clinic Leaf. Maybe you've seen that in textbooks. And we know from our basic rule of thumb that the S shape on the back side, that's going to correspond pretty closely to where the vorticity center is located. Now, this is not a pure short wave. This is actually a closed low in the upper levels. And we see that rotation right there in the Four Corners area, the center of the rotation around Durango and Cortez, Colorado. A little bit of discoloration here. I don't know if that's dust being picked up. There's certainly some gusty winds back there. We either have to look at the ASOS or zoom way in. So why don't we do one of those? Let's take a look at the uh, close-up imagery. This might be a little bit too close. Okay, yeah, let's look at this here. I don't know, I would probably have to compare that to imagery on another day. We can look at ASOS reports and they are gusty, but I don't see any restrictions to visibility. So maybe that is just the terrain. So sorry, I don't have all the answers for you, but you know, this is kind of fun picking things apart and there's always something to learn. We've also got the deformation zone right in here that's forming the comma shape, a mixture of open cell cumulus, very unstable conditions back here, steep lapse rates, and also the cold conveyor belt wrapping around the north side of that system. And further south, this is another interesting area because this is the region of phronogenesis. And we've got very strong mountain wave activity in that area as well. You can see those transverse bands through here, a mixture of altocumulus, altostratus, cumulus with flattened tops, kind of like low-topped anvils right down there, and of course, cirrus. And we can see some gravity waves on the top of that cloud shield. So really a lot to look at. A lot of cool stuff, and we can even look at a camera down here and look at the very tip of this activity, where it's all starting and moving to the northeast. And there it is from the ground, a deck at about 12 to 15,000 feet up, out cumulus. And that's the start of the very strong dynamics down to the south. You can see some drier air where the skies are blue. And I've got another perspective on Interstate 40 right in here around Klein's Corner. And this is looking due east, and you can see the sky changing, some snow showers moving across the area. This is kind of a loop, so it's going to go over and over. But you can see those developments. It starts out as a threatening deck up at about 8,000 feet, 5 to 8,000, nimbostratus, altostratus, and develops into these snow showers. And you've just witnessed the very start of a winter storm. That area that you just saw on the camera, they're looking at up to 20 inches of snow on Interstate 40. Bad idea to be driving through there. If you're driving cross country, you need to avoid the Interstate 40 corridor. Take US 380, I-10, or better yet, wait it out. This whole area under a winter storm warning this afternoon through Friday morning. That includes all of Interstate 40 from Santa Rosa to Gallup, Albuquerque, and Santa Fe, both in that winter storm warning, expecting one to three inches in the valleys, six inches on the mesas, 10 to 18 inches in higher elevations, and 18 to 26, above 8,500 feet. Let me pull that up. Yeah, there it is. That's that area on the camera you just saw. They are expecting about 10 to 20 inches and lower amounts in the lower elevations around Albuquerque, but around them, yeah, this horseshoe-shaped area of high accumulations up to 12 inches at Santa Fe and 20 up there at Los Alamos and much heavier. Uh, you don't want to be driving through 
those mountains, I forget the, yeah, Taos ski area up there. I guess if you have chains, you could probably make it up there. But if you get stuck, well, Dick Halloran will have to come out and bring the snowcat to get you out. And that's always going to go pretty badly. All right. So anyway, that's the snow area, a lot of it extending into Colorado, a separate winter storm warning along Interstate 40 that stretches from Goodland all the way through Lyman and over to Denver International Airport, up to 15 inches expected at Lyman. And you can see that the, yeah, this product is very interesting because you can see a difference in the forecast philosophy. This is the Pueblo forecast area. And that reflects a little bit of a difference in the thinking. They're going with maybe lower amounts. Denver going a little bit more bullish on that snow. But in any case, considerable problems along Interstate 25, especially through the passes there near Trinidad and Raton, and of course along Interstate 40 in eastern Colorado. So now you've been thoroughly apprised on the nature of that situation. Santa Ana winds being driven by that pressure gradient between northern Nevada and the coastal parts of Southern California. And that pressure gradient really not quite that strong. We want to see a good 10, 30 millibar high up in Nevada and maybe 10, 12 to 10, 10 along the coast to really support a major Santa Ana wind event. Anyway, this Bear Clinic system there in southern New Mexico will continue evolving over the next couple of days. It will be somewhat quasi-stationary. We're going to take a look at the map shortly. We've also got the southern frontal boundary in the northeastern U.S., dividing slightly more mild air in the Great Lakes from near 80-degree conditions around New York City. Plenty of moisture in the southeastern U.S. Look at those dew points. They are in the 70s from Atlanta all the way down towards New Orleans. And those are associated with precipitable waters running about 2 to 2.5 inches. Those are almost summertime values, and those will hang on for the next day or two. Some of it working into Texas as we get return flow with that major weather system coming out of New Mexico. So let's take a look at the forecast, looking at the GFS with the fronts overlaid. This is probably the only place on the internet where you're going to be able to get these. These are analyzed by me. And that gives you a look at exactly what's happening over the next few days. So we take this into late tonight and into early tomorrow. Those snows persist all the way from around uh, Kit Carson, Eads, Lamar, all the way down towards Albuquerque and maybe as far south as Roswell. Those persist through the day. We still get this system down to the south continuing to evolve and develop. You can see the thermal gradient across West Texas, northern Mexico, and West Texas as well. Overrunning, setting up there in central Texas and around Lubbock and Midland. And precipitable waters rise across Texas from 0 0.5 to 1.5 inch for tomorrow. Also, rains developing in the southeastern U.S. with the approach of Raphael, although we'll be grazing the area, but still bringing a pretty good moisture surge into that part of the country. And elsewhere around the country, things just a little bit cooler everywhere except for the Northeast and the Central U.S. Then we head into Friday. The system in West Texas continues to evolve, increasing precipitation in the Panhandles and Western Kansas. 1.5 to 2 inch precipitable water flowing into the Great Plains interacting with that low pressure area. The dry slot working into the backside into Fort Stockton in the Pecos River Valley. Extensive snows continue in southern Colorado and northeastern New Mexico. And finally, on Friday, the system lifts out into the Great Plains. It becomes almost entirely rain the warm air working all the way back to Interstate 25, and we're just hanging on to the snow around Las Vegas, New Mexico, Santa Fe, and just west of Tucumcari. We go into Saturday, you can see Raphael way down there to the south. It has elected not to come north. Instead, we get a cold front pushing west to east. And a major increase in rain starts up in the Pacific Northwest, the next system coming on shore. 
And this is how things look going into early next week. You can focus on your favorite area, starting out rainy in the northeast on Monday, rainy in the northwest. We've seen this time and time again, kind of stuck in this continuous train of systems coming from the Pacific, moving across the northern states, the Rockies, and into the northeast, and pretty much sparing the Gulf Coast region. And we go forward into Tuesday and Wednesday, another cold surge, another Pacific weather system, and that brings us all the way to the end. Little glimmer of hope for a pattern change, maybe some cold polar air heading south. This is Canadian polar air, which we have not really seen much of in the past couple weeks. And that's all I have for this Wednesday edition of Forecast Lab. I would greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe or comment or just press the uh, like button. I know you hear that time and time again on various uh, YouTube channels, but that stuff really does help out here. I don't do much social media advertising. This is all grassroots, and I am trying my best to grow the program, but I do need your help from time to time. And of course, Patreon support is greatly appreciated. And you can head to weathergraphics.com to pick up my books, which will have a lot of this information, but in vastly greater detail. All right, we'll see you back here on Friday for another edition of the show. Hope you have a great Wednesday night and Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye.